and that's and that's why I like to volunteer so much. I mean, it just it feels good. It comes from the heart, and um, yeah, that's it's just something at, everyone uh, should do. Uh, Frank, let's get into this. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the next installment of Road Shows and Stuff. I'm your host, Doug McLean, here with Frank Mancina. Frank, how are you today? Good. How are you, Doug? Good to see you. Good, good, good. Yeah, a lot of stuff happening in the world right now. Mm-hmm. I don't know any of it, but uh, <laughs> I guess... <laughs> You're not even paying attention to it. <laughs> Nor are we educated enough to comment on it. But, this is true. Uh, this yeah, is true. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of stuff going on. Um what are we talking about today? Today's actually a pretty, from what I understand, it's it's a pretty exciting episode. It is, Doug. Uh, it is. Something. So, oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. No. Awkward. <laughs> awkward pause. No, no go so, ahead. Take it. Run with it. Okay. Run so today it. is our, uh, you know, season two, episode four. Yes. Uh, and we're talking about a day in the life of an account executive. So both of us oh, that's have right. been account executives. So this we have is... both been account executives. And let me just say as a quick side note, Season two is one of my favorite all-time seasons. I mm. think of all the seasons we've done, season two is probably <laughs> my most favorite. It, it took a while to figure it out, but yeah. So an account executive. So you have a mobile marketing program, yeah. right? You have a vehicle on the road. You've got a driver. Uh, you've been working with the client to design it, to build it out. Get it on the road. It's rolling. What the heck does an account executive do? Where, where are they stationed? I mean, where do they live? What's their day to day? I don't. Yeah. So, you know, account executive comes in really at the start of the program, right? So, yeah. you know, initially you have your kickoff meetings and, and um, you start developing and designing, you know, your roadshow sure. and your account executive is really your liaison between, you know, our team the client and their logistics sort of side of things. So, so yeah, what the account executive will do really is um, help develop the tour schedule, right? So you have your roadshow and now you, you know, have to go places, right? So the account executive comes on board and helps you determine, you know, where you're going to go, right? Maybe you already know where you're going to go so that the account yeah. executive will come on board and help, um, sort of route out your entire tour, right? Because Based most on... of our clients that we have never have any experience with trucks, right? Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, commercial driver's licenses, uh, Department of Transportation requirements. So when you're figuring out a schedule, where do you want to take your road show? We inevitably get the request or the initial round of scheduling that says, okay, it's Monday, we're in Miami. Uh, Tuesday, we'd probably like to do a show in Seattle. Yeah. <laughs> so obviously that poses a few issues um, exactly. and people don't think about drive times or the involvement of the driver in the program. Like we talked about last time, uh, you know, setting up, tearing down, fueling, maintenance, uh, the amount of activities that, that take place between events and how mm -hmm. time consuming that is. So an account executive understands all that. So they take exactly. the hand of the client and they say, well, listen, you know, it's 2,300 miles to get from Miami to Seattle. That's made up mileage. Uh, so that could potentially be a four-day drive, right? Oh, exactly. You want to allow for an extra day to set up, troubleshoot, make sure there are no issues. That's what the account executive can help with on the uh, the scheduling side of things. Yeah, and they really help manage the expectation of the client, right? So early on, like you said, it, they get in exactly. the process early and, on. And, and that's the thing, right? So like you, you kind of touched on it, like... The account executive, uh, the account executive is really versed, really in the driving side of things in terms of the logistics, the DOT, the MOT sort of uh, regulations. Canada reference, Canada yeah. reference. You know, so so they understand like the hours of service. Yeah. Um, and but they also understand sort of what the client is looking to do. So sure, they they, it's a really challenging job because you're really balancing you know, the, sure. the client's expectation because A, they want to, they want to go, you know, everywhere and want to yeah. have, you know, 15 events a week, but yeah, yeah. Well, really you got to say, you know, let's take a step back here. Let's, let's talk about, you know, how we can utilize your schedule and logistics to kind of really maximize the amount of, of stops you're going to do. Right. So yeah. like your, to your point, you're not going to go from Miami to, to Seattle in a week. You're going to go, you're going to stop everywhere in between and, sure. and things like that. Right. Utilize the number of weeks you have on the road. And in addition to that, that's just one of many roles that they play. Yeah. 
you know, in, in kind of the uh, the hierarchy of communication, if you will, it usually on the day to day it goes from client to account executive uh, to driver, right out yeah. in the field. So the account executive, the person that sits in the office or from their home office, wherever that happens to be, they're the liaison, like you mm -hmm. said, for all information that has to be communicated to the driver directly. Usually there isn't too much, and correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, in programs past, there isn't a lot of direct communication with our drivers. It usually filters through the account executive uh, for whatever reason. Um, you know, they have to kind of disseminate information, uh, clarify things for the client, and then they communicate that bundle of information to the driver directly, not necessarily just for one event, but for several that are coming up. So they are the answer the phone at 5 a.m at 11.30 p.m. at 3 yeah. a.m., anything that goes sideways, they're the first person that the driver calls and they're the first person that the client calls on both ends. So they're being mm -hmm. drawn in both directions. And they literally, they will handle everything. There's a catering issue. You're yeah. a huge, uh, you know, the Boston Marathon, what have you. Yeah. You know, we had, uh, you know, $5,500 in catering set up and it's not getting there in time. You know, it's not gonna make it for the 11 o'clock opening. Who's on the phone trying to source additional information, yeah. possibly get more catering? That's the account executive. That's the person who does everything. Driver feels sick. They don't yeah. think they can make the next event. Who do they call? The account executive. Mm -hmm. They then have to figure out how to get a replacement out there. Then how do you manage client expectations? So it can't just be a stumble bum. You're bringing yeah, off exactly. the street who has no communication skills, doesn't know how to buffer situations or manage specific situations. Uh, it has to be somebody who really knows what they're doing. They have to have good management skills, uh, communication skills. Frank? No, I was going to say, and, the, and I think the challenge lies when you have multiple tours that you're managing, oh, right? That's so, a good point. An account you know, executive is not just managing not just one, one tour. tour. Exactly. So you kind of have to really balance your time. You know, you really have to be a good at time management and, yeah. and balancing that time between each of your tours could, because, you know, one fire, you know, for example, oh. world, but you know, one fire could really take up an entire day of, of your time. Right. So that's why we have a lot of the support, internal support um, to help us with those, you know, those situations, right. We sure. have our, you know, safety supervisor, we have our fleet manager, you know, things like that, right. To help yeah. out with some of those little fires. That, that happen. And like some examples, and I'm sure you can think of a couple, it's like, there's a massive event you've been planning for, for weeks. Like, let's say you're using the trailer, let's say it's a double expandable 53 foot trailer. You're using it on the trade show floor as part of your exhibit, right? It, it's, it's taking place of your traditional trade show space and booth. You're supposed to be at, let's say the McCormick center in Chicago. It's supposed to be there at 5 AM Monday. You're there, management's looking over their clipboard and they said, oh, I didn't hear anything about a truck. Yeah. Well, that then starts the fire, right? And that yeah. starts the fury of 800 phone calls, getting to the bottom of it, connecting the right person. And the stability, and that's important, the stability of the account executive is the person who can do that. They can pull up their laptop, do the research, go through emails, find mm -hmm. permits, uh, different people to call, as opposed to the driver who's on the ground, right? Trying yeah, to move exactly. this thing from A to B to C, so they don't have the time to dedicate to that sort of thing. Um, and I'm sure you've had experiences too, where you've gotten to any public event like that. Yeah. Like, well, I didn't know the truck was going to be that big. You're like, oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah because you know, you make a good point because when you're talking to venues and to um, you know just public spaces or groups and 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 people who own spaces, you know, you you it's a challenge to to try to describe you know, how big these units are, you know, how big the trailers oh, sure. are, right? So that's why, you know, a lot of the account executives, we have parking specs, we have photos that we use, we have videos that we show. That they send ahead of time. That we send ahead of time, to right? To the whole so, site. And that's, and that's, you know, half the battle is kind of, is managing, you know, the communication between all these different events, you know, not only the event next week, but also the event in six weeks, the event sure. in four weeks, right? So you're always managing the communication with all these different venues, um, let alone there's other duties that some tours may have oh, sure. um, on top of right that. on top of that right so for example we've had tours where you know we've had to do press releases before every tour or or develop uh, a social media campaign and and uh, a, a tweet had to go out before each tour and you know uh, those are all like little things that just add on to the sort of you know sure. day-to-day -day, day -day duties of uh, of account executive 
and you know, a lot of our, our a lot of our, our tours are kind of, they hit a certain sort of level of, of cruise control after a while. You know, you're, you're, we're always scheduled out at least a couple of weeks in advance. And that's what we require of our clients. And that's what we ask of them is that we work through scheduling. So we always know where we're going to be. So we can pre-plan for lodging, transportation, fueling, maintenance, things like that. But if you think about it, each individual event, even though you do hit cruise control, it's like a, it's like a party, right? So yeah. you have one tour, it has three parties that week. So let's say you're managing four tours. Is my math correct? You have 12 parties that week and you're yeah. responsible sort of directly and indirectly to make sure each one of those goes smoothly. Exactly. And if there are any issues that arise during the event, whatever it happens to be, you have to kind of iron it out and figure out a solution, usually with the client, with the driver. So mm -hmm. it's, it's a difficult, it's a lot of pressure. I think it's a lot of pressure on people and it's day to day and it's relentless. And if you're on the road for 26, 36 weeks a year, um, you know, it's constant. It's week after week after week. So, Frank, with that being said, what kind of characteristics do you look for in a good account executive? Like, who is a typical account executive? Yeah, I think, one, the person needs to be uh, teachable, right? Yes. So they, they, have to, Great point. They, have to, they have to understand that um, you don't know what you don't know, right? So yeah. you, you have to kind of take you know, a lot of, you know, we have a ton of great account executives and a lot of good experience on a team. So sure. We're always very helpful. They're always very helpful, always like giving a helping hand. So being able to be teachable is key. Mm -hmm. um, being able to problem solve on the go is also a huge asset. Um, and I don't know if you can, it's, it's something I don't, know, like, I don't know if you can teach that or you just have that in you, <laughs> but, sure. um, you know, when, you know, there's tons tons of things going on and something hits the fan and like, you yeah. have to kind of, you know, take a step back and kind of figure out that solution, <laughs> figure out yeah. the solution as opposed to like panic. Sure. Um, sure. Also, um, you know, being, uh, being able to write you know, write good emails, right? Yeah, no, um, sure. Yeah, communication you know, skills, communi just basic communication skills. Communication skills, being uh, proficient in, in Excel. Oh, right? God, that's, that's right. Huge, Tons uh, of record keeping. Job. Yeah. Documentation. Uh, I also said, um, or was thinking, I just jotted this down, actually. You have to be able to manage personalities, yes. not only with clients, but drivers as well. Each one of our drivers is their own person, right? Oh, they exactly. deal with, with stress and they deal with situations differently, as do our clients. You may have the most relaxed, um, you know, oh, hey, Jim. Uh, yeah, by the way, we can't do the event today because we had nine yeah. flat tires. And they're like, oh, it's all right. We'll reschedule tomorrow. And then you'll have the guy who's on the plane who's trying to like hunt you down and kill you. So you have to be <laughs> able to deal with both of those yeah. types of personalities. That's good Not point. to mention, as I said, the different drivers. Yeah. Uh, some may think it's the end of the world. They may call you at five in the morning and say, I can't get into this lot. There's no way the event is happening. They call you two hours later and be like, okay, I'm here. I'm set up. So it's, <laughs> it's just how those people deal yeah. with it too. So talk about being a mediator. You just have to be that, that person that you have to be the Switzerland of everything. Be yeah. able to absorb the information, uh, process it, deliver it and then manage expectations. And that can be yeah. so difficult. And yeah. like you said, I think it's, it's, there's a little bit of that that you have to be born with, you yeah. know, you can only teach so much. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, if somebody's born and bred to be an accountant and that's all they know are numbers, they're probably not going to be able to do the, the mm -hmm. best job possible in this role. But if you are a people person, you're well organized, uh, you you're quick on your feet. Yeah. You can multitask. You're good at like, you know, internet browsing, yeah. uh, <laughs> you know, to find like, you know, backup generators or solutions, uh, then yeah, I, you'd be, uh, I think you'd be able to do a great job, great job Agreed. in this. And usually with our company, at least an account executive can then lead to another role within the company. Agreed. That's kind of like yeah. the first post-grad role within MRA is like yeah. being an account executive and then moving up the ladder from there yeah. until one day so. you ascend to the top. And become a Frank Mancina. Okay. okay. All right. <laughs> I don't know about that. I don't know about All that. Right. <laughs> so Frank, anything else we wanted to touch on regarding account executives? Other than they pretty much do everything. <laughs> <laughs> Other than they're pretty much uh, the glue. And that's that funny too, because 
like you said, when the stuff really hits the fan, yeah. then people like you and I get involved. Yeah. And that's what it is. It's, it's difficult for us, but let's be honest. I mean, they're mm-hmm. the first point of resistance with any yeah. like emergencies or fires. So yeah, exactly. hats off to all of them. Past, Agreed. present, and future. It's true. So. No, that's, that's pretty much, we kind of just gave a nice little 2,500 <laughs> yeah, foot but, view uh, of it. And uh, <laughs> yeah, wait, well, God, I heard another marketing term the other day it was so good. I forget what it was. It wasn't the 30,000 foot view, but it was something, it's just, it was another replacement term for something you should have said the original term in the first place anyway. Yeah. <laughs> like, I'm going to relax. And it was like, oh, I'm going to reset the parking booster. <laughs> anyway. Anyway. Uh, so Frank, with that being said, uh, do we have a stuff this week? I think we do have a stuff. I think we we do. Stuff. And I have it right here. I just okay. found it. I didn't realize we did. Producer just handed it to me. Thank you, Edna. It is, uh, okay, so Frank, a lot of people don't know you are Hindu. No, you're not. So if you were Hindu and you believed in reincarnation, okay, a rebirth, a reexistence past your present life, what animal, assuming you're not a human, what animal, we talk about animals a lot, don't we? (laughs) We do. (laughs) (laughs) Anteater. (laughs) penguins uh was there another animal anyway yeah in a perfect world reincarnation what would you be reborn as what creature and why <laughs> this is easy you've, you've, no it's not yes, you it can't, is. no you can't say look i'll be a tiger because i'm king of no the no no food chain okay so <laughs> so my spirit animal is oh. uh <laughs> is a hawk to- i love hawks oh what do you mean? A hard life. It's a hard life. No way, man. They're flying. They're soaring. You're regurgitating for your kids. Oh, you get a fun. Oh, life. that's life. No, I love hawks. Okay. <laughs> Actually, it's... So, well, for one, my neighbor growing up bred hawks, so we used to like take. <laughs> so we used to take the hawk. Is that legal? And, <laughs> yeah, he used to like breed hawks in his backyard. He had these two huts, and. <laughs> You know, we'd we'd walk away. You Did you know, grow up in the from... Alps? What are you who are you talking about? <laughs> no, he just had these two like Cooper hawks and like obviously he, the Cooper hawk, the, the good old Cooper hawks. So oh, anyways, they're like we... farm hawks, aren't they? Yeah, like they hunt so, mice and yeah. So he, yeah. we what we would do is we go into this empty field, which is now houses now, but we go into this empty field with his Doberman Pinscher. Oh, love and, those dogs! And it's my the, favorite dog. Is it? And so um, I grew up watching Magnum PI. So, anyways, the the hawk would like you know fly down and like catch like a rabbit and then the oh, doberman crazy. would like r- run out there and, and get the rabbit it was pretty cool it's like team so i've always it's like had a disney this, movie yeah so i've always had this like love for hawks and uh so <laughs> actually the other day i was golfing there was a you know my spirit animal flying yes. above me and i made a putt and I, and I knew it was because the spirit animal. <laughs> I knew it was because of the hawk. Isn't, that's like ancient, like Native American mystical, <laughs> like, yeah. It's kind of like. Actually, at the, the Windsor Firehouse, we do have a hawk. Um, that is right. On, yeah. On, uh, on the door. The Native um, mural. Uh, that's right. Indigenous mural. Indigenous mural. Well done. Not to be confused with non-Indigenous murals, this which are true. far less common. How about you, Doug? Um, How about you? What uh, sort of animal are you looking at? Uh, you know what? Uh, before as... coming up with this topic, I didn't think of myself. I have no <laughs> idea. Uh, I'd say probably like uh, a polar bear, but it's a lonely life. But uh, <laughs> you get probably you could get shot and then you starve and you have a horrible death. So probably, uh, God, I don't know, cheetahs are super fast. Uh, it'd be cool, but they only run for like 20 seconds. So every <laughs> few days, I'd probably run super fast. Uh, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I should have known before I, uh, it's okay. It's okay. I don't know. What's a good animal? Probably a, uh, a lion maybe mm. or a lioness. That's pretty basic, but yeah, it is basic. Okay. Probably a, uh, I can't think of any other animals right now. Anteater. You're going to be, <laughs> yes, I'd pro- I'd want to be an anteater trapped in a horrible zoo my whole life. <laughs> That'd be great. That would be great. So, Frank, Anyways. on that note, uh, another great stuff. Yes, another great stuff. So, I'm an anteater trapped in the Toledo <laughs> Zoo, and you are a hawk <laughs> protecting farms across North America. That's right. Uh, what do we uh, What do we have in the schedule coming up for our next episode? Yeah, next episode we have uh, one of our guests, another guest coming on. 
Mr. Our director, our director of technology, Ted O'Malley. So we were wondering if we should be selling tickets to this online. We, we don't want to be. shut down servers uh, <laughs> around the world with the uh, attendance. No, so we're gonna yeah. we're actually gonna be talking about technology and roadshows, which has yeah. just advanced so much in the past. You know, sure. Yeah, and how it affects years. the experience yeah. of the visitor to the trailer, right, or exactly. to the uh, yeah to the interior. That that'll be pretty exciting. That's exciting it's gonna stuff. Be fun. It's gonna be good. All right, and uh, just, no, just uh, just wanted to say thank you to all of our viewers. And uh, yes, we've gotten some feedback. To, we have, we have. Uh, follow us on our social media, yes, um, channels, and uh, don't forget to check out our website www.gomra.com. Great website. Yep. Great website. Good job, all Jay. right. Uh, with all of that being said, thank you again, Frank. Thank you again, everyone. And uh, we will see you next time on Road Show. All right. Bye, everyone. <laughs>